The first prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving for God that has brought us this far up till now. The next prayer point will be a prayer point of completion. That all that the Lord has started, we declare that it's getting completed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 Let's go we give you praise. Heavenly Father, once again, we'll thank you for the opportunity to sit at your word, to listen, to be thoughts, your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you speak to everybody by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Please, you may have your seat. Glory to God. Amen. This is a good opportunity to say hello to someone on your right and your left. Say hello to them. You know, find out, find out what's your name. Um, find out, you know, you come to church regularly or this is your first time, you know. That you can also bring your phone numbers and say you look like someone I would like to know more about, you know, and go ahead and take their numbers and, you know, yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, glory to God. So, yeah, so it's nice. I'm giving you the time to just take the numbers. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's giving you the time to just take the numbers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is asking our prayers almost every other time we're having a wedding and 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 a wedding. God is really, really answering our prayers. I we're grateful to God for what they call it, the prayers that God is answering. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. All right, um, please, I just want to encourage you that um, our speaker last week had some books. Some of you wanted to buy some of the books. The books are outside of the book stand. Let's go ahead and get the books. And, you know, let's go ahead and get the books and look at the books and read the books. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, so let's get into God's Word today. Um, let's, we're going to read about three scriptures, and that would be the foundation for what we reach. Um, one of the things I want to talk about will be finding quality partners, finding quality partners, finding quality partners, finding quality partners. All right, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. So for all of you that are new to church, maybe you came with a family during Thanksgiving, I want to give you some background. Welcome to Harvesters that you've always heard about. We're glad that you are here. This month is our family and relationship month. So what we're doing the family and relationship month, out of our four services, we'll teach, um, you know, on marriage and relationship in the first, second, and third. The fourth service, we'll devote it to particularly teach those that are single in our church about how to be successful as singles, date, and choose who to marry. So if you're married and you're wondering what we're talking about, the church is not for single people, but this particular service is dedicated for single people up to the end of this month. So this Sunday, our next one to be the final. So if you're wondering, what will I gain from this? I'm sure that you will have someone that is single that will come to you for advice, for counsel. It's an opportunity to just speak to them and just, you know, have those conversations with them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Proverbs chapter 23 in verse 7. The Bible says this. The Bible says, let's go ahead and read one to go. For has a think it in his heart, he said, so what is he? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15. Bible says, as it thinketh in his heart, so is he. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15. Let's read together one to go. And truly, watch the next word now. If they had been what? Mindful of the country from whence they came out, what will happen to them? They might have the opportunity to have returned. 
Mindfulness creates opportunity. That's where I'm going to. Mindfulness. So the first scripture we read is a principle of the mind. It said, as a man thinketh, so is the man. So the first law is this, first in, then out. Every change starts from within, then without. That's the first law. First in and without. The second law is this, so it's first in and without. The second law, which is very powerful, is this, very, very powerful, is this, nothing will change outside, which is on, change on the inside first. Now, the second principle is this. The Bible says, if they have been mindful of the country that they came out of, that means that the way you think and what you're mindful of will create opportunity. Let me give you a very powerful illustration here. Glory to God. Can someone just volunteer and stand up anywhere you are? Someone just volunteer and stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe one of you needs to sit down, you know. But, but I like your hair. Sit, sit. I just like her hair. Yeah, her hair is good. And she's kind of tall. Give her a microphone. Look around and tell me I'm, look around and tell me I'm wearing white. White. Look around and tell me I'm wearing white. Just how many of you? How many have you counted? How many are wearing white? A lot of are wearing white. How many are wearing red? No, don't look around. Just look at me. I have no idea, sir. You have no idea. Watch this. How many are wearing red? She has no idea. But I'm wearing white. She has an idea. Look to in front of you. On the right, she's wearing red. Beside you, she's wearing red. Yes, sir. Why did you see it before? Because focus creates blindness. So, if your mind is saying, and this is the first principle for the single people, they are no good men. If what I ask her, I say, look for those that are wearing white. If in her mind is what they are no good men, all she will find is what all the good men that are not there. That's what she will find. If I say they are good men, she cannot find them because it was not a focus. So single people that want to choose quality partners, the first thing, it's not about choosing. It's about fixing your mindset first. Look at her now. Right next to her. The girl in red, stand up. The girl in red, stand up, yeah? Yeah, yeah stand, stand, yeah. Look next to her. Do you see how bold that red is? And she said nobody's wearing red. Just next to her. The closest person wearing white is away from her. The red is closer to her. But I'm just showing you that the way you see determines what you tell your mind. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. Thank you. Thank you. You did so well. Thank you. <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. So I just want to tell you that. So question. The question is that she didn't sit. So this is a question. She didn't see the person wearing the red because the person wasn't there. Yes or no? No. She didn't see it because in her mind, she was not looking out for what? For red. So you need to be careful and tell yourself what I'm looking out for. And today we're going to listen to conversations within our minds. So two scriptures we've read today. Number one is from Psalm 23 verse 7. What the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But also in Hebrews chapter 11, verse, um, Proverbs 23, verse 7, not, not Psalm, you know, and Hebrews 11, verse 15, where the Bible says, if they are mindful of where they came out from, they will have had the opportunity. So mindfulness creates opportunity. So if I were you, I'll be careful of what I'm mindful at. So let me, let's go straight to this, how to find attractive people. Praise God. So the first thing that we're going to start the mindset, number one, we need to be careful of these seven mentalities. We need to be careful of what these seven mentalities. So the question is that, number one, number one mentality, marriage is hard. Marriage is hard. Mentalities that keep single, single, Number one, marriage is what? Hard. How does it keep you single? If you think something is hard, will you go for it? Exactly. I don't think marriage is hard. I think marriage needs effort. 
the two are too different. In school hard, but school needs effort. You cannot just be lazy through school and think you will succeed. So the first thing is that, so let me say something to you here. So there are many people that are single and want marriages, and you keep telling yourself, I might have had. Subconsciously, subconsciously, what will eventually happen to you is that your mind will keep telling you that marriage is what? Very hard. And if it's very hard, you know what it's going to do to you? It's going to take you out of the way from seeing those things. You will then, so when you say marriage is hard, your mind will be preventing you from it preventing you from thinking towards marriage. The second mentality is this. I want to just give you some mentality. Someone say hallelujah. So on a scale of 1 to 10, write down somewhere, do I think marriage is hard? So you can know, because this is an application session, you can know, how do you think marriage is hard? You know, yes, on a scale of 1 to 10, write down somewhere, do I think marriage is hard? What do I think? The reason why is that as a man thinketh in his heart, what will happen to him? Thank you. Do I think marriage is hard? And if you think marriage is hard, let me help you to change it. Why do you think marriage is hard? Anybody? You have it. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah. Chuma, we need to be more active so that we don't use all the time. You know, yeah. Yet, yeah, thank you. Thank you. You can stop the keyboard. Thank you. Yeah. You can sit down. You don't have to stand up. Yeah. So why do you think it's hard? So, um, good afternoon. Have you been married before? No. <laughs> but you know marriage is hard. I've always thought marriage is hard. Why? Because growing up, my parents, they divorced when I was, I think, eight or nine years old. Your parents divorced when you were eight or nine? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And since then, till now, my, my mom, she said she was never going to marry again because of us. Yeah. And I've seen my dad go marry like three or four times. Either they divorce or the wife, the last wife he got married to, I think he, she died of breast cancer or something. So I don't know. My mom have always, like she always tell us growing up that don't blame your father. Your dad is a nice person. Like, But sometimes if I look at it, my mom, the even as small as I was then, I saw, the, I saw the effort she put inside the marriage. And at the end of the day, nobody appreciated her. Or nobody still appreciated for her till today. So sometimes I always think about it. Like, I know my mom very well. Even till now, some family member, they still don't believe that she's not married to anybody. But we, we know that. She said she did not want to get married. So I always have this mentality that Marriage is hard. Women, I think they are not, they don't appreciate women enough. Because I feel like most of them, the efforts they put into marriage, and as a Yoruba lady, the mentality of this Yoruba land of women, even if you go to work, you have to come back, work, do the house cause and all that. So I don't know. No, I, I, just, I, I understand what you're saying. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen on television or in news where houses get demolished, where houses collapse in Lagos? So all houses are bad? No. No, tell me, tell me. <laughs> no. So do you want to use your parents' experience to judge the whole of marriage for six billion people? Will that be the right thing to do? No. But that's what you're doing right now. <laughs> it's just that... This no, I'm not, I'm, not I'm, I'm only saying to you, I want to ask you, have you seen someone, have you heard of someone that died from childbirth? Have you heard of anybody like that? Yes. Are you going to have a child? Are you going to have a child? Yes. Are you going to die from childbirth? No. Why? Because I believe I... The, the reason why... See, you see, in other areas, something happened, but you choose to believe what? Differently. But in this area, something happened, and you choose to believe that this is the norm. You're living in a house right now. You're not afraid that one day this house will collapse. But you've seen on television, on radio, in blogs, out in recent times, many houses in Lagos and Nigeria have collapsed. But you're not thinking your own house will collapse, so you're living there right now. Because you chose to believe that, okay, something went wrong with that house, but it's not for all houses. 
The second thing is that the same thing when it comes to having a child. There are people that you know you've heard about. They had a childbirth and they died in childbirth. But you chose to believe that your own case would be different. Yes or no? Why can't you do that for marriage? You know, sometimes I, I think No, you need to answer my question. Why can't you do that for marriage? Yeah. Why can't you believe differently? I do try my... I try to think different sometimes, but... So I don't want to say to you that I'm not, I, let me tell you something, even if you tell me that, Pastor, I don't want to do it differently, I will agree with you. But I'm just saying to you fundamentally one thing, that the reason why you believe that is because you chose to believe it. And there are other areas where you have chosen to not believe the same thing. And that's it. Praise God. There are people, that, there are some of us here that grew up from very poor backgrounds, yes or no? But you chose to believe that you'd be successful, yes or no? Why did you choose to believe that you'd be like your parents? Uh, you see how funny it is? You, 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 know, you, look at, oh, you know, like, ah, my father was poor, my mother was poor. Then me to what? I'll be poor. Why didn't you agree to that? Uh, one lady did that, God forbid. You know, but, but you see what I'm saying? But when it comes to marriage, all of a sudden, my father had a divorce, my mother had a divorce, marriage is hard, I'll have a divorce. No, it's a choice. You know, you must be, ca you must be careful because that belief system is a choice you're choosing for yourself. Amen. That, that, that's fine for me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not saying, listen to me, I'm not saying that what you believe is not reality, but I'm only saying that that belief is what a choice. And let me say something to you. The thing about belief is this, Proverbs 23, verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if that's what you believe, that will, what's what would ultimately happen to you. So the reason why, you need to ask yourself, does this belief serve me or does it work against me? Does this belief create the future I want or it begins to destroy the future I have? Glory to God. I said glory to God. The second mentality that affects people that get in mind is that quality people are scarce. Yeah. Quality people are what? Are scarce. And you know amazingly, both men and women think so. Yes or no? Yeah. Give, give it to that guy. Yeah, that, that guy. Yeah. He said yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking back. You... Yeah, he said yes. Stop, stop. Yeah, that, that guy, yeah. 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 Do you think quality girls are scars? You said yes. Why do you think so? Uh, it be almost the same answer because what, what we see online and what is there is... Quality. Question, are quality girls scars? Yes or no? Don't, don't, don't give us stories. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Hold on. Are quality girls cast? <laughs> See, you, you know the thing, you know the thing, this, you know the thing, the, mom, the moment you say that quality people are cast, your eye will not say what quality people. It will be like that girl, she stood up, red was next door. She did not see red. She saw white that was stay away. When you say quality people are cast, you will not be able to pick quality people. It's the one that are from China that you will pick. So the thing is that, let me tell you something. The thing is that before we tell about the things you have to do to, be, to attract, you need to first work on yourself. And how do you work on yourself? You need to work on your mindset because your mindset is what attracts experiences and things like that to you. Glory to God. Okay, you want to say something? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Are quality girls cast? <laughs> yes, right. I, I still think so. The, you, know, the re, I, you know why? And she said, based on the experiences. So the reason why is that, and let me say something to you, everyone look up here. One of the things Satan does very well is to give you a bad experience to change how you think. That's why he told Jesus Christ, if you are the son of God, take this. He wanted to change how Jesus Christ thought. So he puts all those terrible relationships in your mind. You think that I, I left the relationship, but that was not what he wanted. He wanted the way you thought to what? To change ultimately. Hallelujah. So the second mindset we must deal with is this, that quality people are what? Ask us. Hallelujah. 
So, rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. Where am I? 10 being that I don't think quality men are scarce. Uh, sorry, 10 being that I think quality men are scarce. I'm very sure. Or quality women are scarce. I'm very sure. Or 1, I do not think so. Okay, let's go. Now, all of you watching online go like, well, I'm in America. Quality men are scarce. That's what you think. And just for you to know, either you're in America or you're in Canada, this is what I will say to you. The world is now global. What does that mean? We meet more people online. There's something, oh wow, there's something I want, I hope I can show you. Oh Lord, help me. Is Ben here? If I send it to, it's a video. I'm going to send it to Ben and, and BC. I hope they can. Uh, Okay. If Ben is here and wants to get the video, just let me know. I would like you to, you know, post it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, um, the video is still going, 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 going. So quality men are scarce. Are quality men scarce? It depends. The moment you say quality men are scarce, what happens to you? Quality men become scarce. The moment you say quality women are scarce, what happens to you? Quality women, because it's not because it's China kind of guys, China kind of girls. And the reason why is that it's what you believe, that China kind of guys and girls are the people that are currently available right now. Praise God. Okay, who has a question about that? Yeah, this is a seminar. This is a single seminar. Yeah, this is a single seminar. You have a question, my brother? Okay. If you, if you have a challenge, just say, Pastor, this is my... Listen to me. If you... If you I don't want to do that. Me, I know people... How I many of the guys are really... You are ready for a relationship, but the person you want to date, you can, they have not found. Raise up your hands, let me see. Just as a guy. But, you know, you've not just seen... You, you are ready, but you've not met quality. Raise up your hand. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. You... you uh -huh. You've not met what? Give him the microphone, I can't hear. <laughs> Another guy like that, you, you're, you're single, but you've not met quality. You too? Uh huh. Stop <laughs> eyeing me, raise up your hand. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Um, for me, I think girls these days, what do you... No, leave, leave girls. Talk about you. <laughs> leave girls. Ah. Okay, 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 sir. For you, me, tell us what you have for, met, for, what you're looking for. For, for, me, for uh -huh. me, most of the girls I've met, yes. they only, like, they believe on what they see. They don't believe on what they feel. That's, that's my problem with them. What does that mean? Are you trying to date someone that is not your financial class or something? <laughs> Pra Praise God. Let, hold on, hold on. You know this single something there? Let me tell you, if I was single, if I was single, and that good daughter walks beside me and she's a Christian, I can't date her. Where would I have the power to date that good daughter? We need to be honest with ourselves. Small thing, she has private jet. Have I bought first class Have I bought tickets? Where would I start from? You need to be honest. You see, some guys, when guys say, um, what do they call it? Girls, you know, um, what, what is it? They say, girls, uh, some girls, this, you know, what, what this is. Uh, they say, some girls, you know, all they want, all they want is money. Some, that's true. But sometimes, you are dating me above your financial state. Praise God. It's like hotel. There's hotel for 20K. There's hotel for 50K. There's hotel for 100K. There's hotel for half a million. So as you approach the lady, you will look and say, uh-huh, this hotel match my pockets. <laughs> Praise God. But, but that's not what you're talking about. You want to tell me more? Tell me more, yeah. Um, sir, I don't think um, even girls, they don't want to date a poor guy. Like they don't, they, that's not the simple truth. They are, they are looking for a poor girl wants a rich guy. And I believe too that a, a poor guy needs a rich girl. That's what I just feel. Yes. There's a brother in front of you. All right, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So, according to what you said, 
Yeah. He said, if Dangote's um, daughter walks beside you, yeah. you might not be able to approach her. Yeah. So please miss my question. Is marriage or relationship transactional? Okay. It's not transactional, but it's realistic. It is. It is. Hold, hold on. I, I, I will tell you the difference between and realistic. Praise God. I want to ask you a question. Don't you want to school in Harvard? Yeah, I want to school in Harvard. Harvard school, maybe it's about $200,000 per year. Is that realistic? It's, I want to, but realistically, can I afford it? You know, so it's not, so for example, if, let me tell you something, and this is the thing about thinking the future. If I see that kind of Dangote's daughter right now, I will ask myself, if there are demands that this lifestyle she's used to, can I fund it? The girl travels private jets, business car. In fact, if you go to marry Dangote's daughter, most likely you must have police escorts because they must not kidnap her. And if you have police escort, there are areas that you, can, you cannot be living in, in Ibafo. <laughs> and say you have police escort. It will not make sense. So some things go, I'm not, I, I hear what you say, but some things just go hand in hand. So once you make that decision that this is what I want to do, it's all the things that will also come with it. Yes. Okay, okay so Bosa, so yeah. that means the society is now... Yeah. It's now split there. That means the rich only did the rich and the poor did the poor. That means the society no. will not move forward. That, no. <laughs> you, 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 you know the beautiful thing about hearing you guys? I'm, I'm always amazed how you guys interpret what I've just said just now. Because I've not said the rich man. I said just marry where you are financially comfortable. So the thing is that I've not said the poor should marry the poor, the rich marry the rich. For example, is it okay? I want to ask you something. Why do you want to marry someone that if they tell you where they want to live, it will make you break down? What? You will hustle. What? No, no, I'm not saying they are not humble beginnings. But the thing is that, so let me give you an example myself. When I started dating my wife, I'm not even sure if I had a car. But it was not far. I didn't have a car, she didn't have a car. Two of us careless. <laughs> but not that I'm dating someone that is trying private jet, I don't have a car. Praise God. You date someone, you are buying from Aswani, she's buying from Aswani, all of you are wearing Bendan boutique. Mm -mm. As those are As you grow, she too will grow. Grow will meet grow. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> now, all the men want to talk, right? Yes, this guy had told me, the guy that was giving me eye, I don't know. Yeah. What do you have to say? The, the guy beside you, yes, yes, yes. Why do you want I was saying that, yeah, yeah, say something, that the microphone is... Yeah. What was the question, sir? <laughs> no, if you don't know the question, we can take the microphone back from you. Um, because we're saying that you, you said that um, you think that quality women has cost. I want to tell me why you said so. Not just about quality women, I guess. Yeah. But I would say. Um, you need to hold the microphone because I can hear you. Uh, okay. okay, that's fine. Yeah, I feel like. Um, I just want to ask a question, basically. I okay. want to know, like, why is love in general conditional? Why is love what? In general conditional. What do you mean by that? Good. Um, While growing up, we were told, or I was told basically, that um, only your mom can love you unconditionally. And I don't know if it's the same mindset or something, but we Maybe it's the same mindset that you have. Maybe I'm wrong then. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Thank you. See, everything will go, goes back to that mindset. Because now he said something, I was told that only your mom can love you unconditionally. And you know what that does to you? Every time a girl shows up in your life, there will be a comparison. And guess what? There's nobody that will love you like your mom in terms of love you the way your mother loves you. They will love you, but it will be in another way. What? What was? I don't understand what that means. Give me the microphone. What are you saying? You want them to love you the way your mother loves you? Oh, my God. Look what bad do. What? The way your mother loves you. I won't be bad now. Hey, marry your mom now. Ah, 
mad, 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 mad. <laughs> See, I'm only saying that Man. mother's love cannot cross a boundary, yes or no? So I'm only saying, the thing is that you can't eat your cake and have it. Mother's love is defined, is within a confinement. You know, other love is defined in that confinement. So I'm only saying, I'm because you're like, it's, 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 the reason why... <laughs> Please, let's keep going, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Is that one someone that love me like my mom? Let me tell, give me give me the microphone. If, give me the microphone. If so, what's your name? What's your name? You have a microphone. <coughs> if someone loves you like your mom, in one year you will leave the person. Why? Why? Do you know how disciplined your mom is? You say, come here, sit down there. Can you take that from your girlfriend? Relax now, relax, calm down, calm down, relax. relax I'm only saying, relax. the reason why is that the confinement of mother's love, and let me tell you, I've been married, and just remember this, I've been married for almost 20 years now. Yeah. Congrats. So you must remember this, you must remember this, no man wants another mother. No man wants what? Another mother. Because even is your mom, you say, mommy is too much, too much. This you that will tell you that here, yeah, mommy is too much, too much. Now, just imagine the girl that you are older than is not telling you all of this thing. You say, come on, shut up there. Who is talking to you? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, back to the second question. So the second thing is that what mentality, what's the first mentality? Mar marriage is hard. So you need to change it. What is, so, so let me tell you, someone say marriage is easy. I will not say that. I don't want to exaggerate. Marriage takes work, that's all. So, instead of saying marriage is hard, I want to have a positive way. Because when you say marriage is hard, you made it very difficult. I'll put it in a positive way, marriage takes work. For example, does driving take work? But it's work that you're, it's okay. Driving takes work. What's the second thing? Quality partners are scarce. What's the right thing? Quality partners are available. Quality partners are available. I wanted to watch this video. I want to watch it. Every those of you online want to watch this video. Just one minute. Just look at that. How couples met. Look at it. Each year, the year is there. Look at it. 1947, 19. See how it's, it's changing. Church, college, online, co workers, neighbors. This is Europe, actually. Just watch online, oh. Watch online. 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 I told you, one of the sessions I want to do is how to be found online. You will close your Instagram for what? <laughs> See, oh, you've removed it. 60%. The reason why is that every day, how many people do you meet? You enter Uber, you don't meet anybody but the driver. You get to work, people that you already know. You come back for work. But online, on, your, on each page, you can meet millions of people. And I'm saying it because church people, I, I don't know what is wrong with your mind, why you don't want to be contemporary. Do nice photo shoots, nice photo Update your stories, your pictures regularly. Nice photo shoots that shows, and when you do that photo, don't show things that are irresponsible. You don't market or you don't sell. Don't show us breasts. Because if you start showing breasts, you start attracting some other kind of people. You start hearing people that enter your demon, how much? Let's meet up. You'll be hearing, because of what you're showing. When you, you know, when you, and this is what I'm saying, when you have those kind of pictures, show pictures that shows your value. Show yourself, you know, shows your value. You know, show yourself well-dressed, nicely dressed in your PJs, on the beach, you know, swimming. Show things like that. But also show yourself having lunch, cooking, praying, worshiping. Show things that, show the social media platform, thank you. But more than that, 
In the comment section of people that have similar values, write intelligently. This is what I say, I'm telling you. <laughs> what, why are you telling me? What, what has happened to you? Give me the microphone. <laughs> he said, I'm telling you. Give me, give, yeah? Okay, good morning. Good, good morning. Afternoon, good afternoon. Good morning, anyone? Okay, sometimes I, I go on social media and I see what people write, especially some ladies. And I'll just be like, And when you say, you go to their profile, right? I go to their profile. And you see, once they see the comment, they, they not say, it has to confirm, because your comment is a suggestion of who you are. Your profile is a confirmation of who you are. Uh huh. I go there and I'm like, why would this artist say this kind of thing? Like, <laughs> the thing coming out from your head doesn't match your look. That was harsh. That was cold. 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 Praise the Lord. For example, you see me post comment like, you know, I post comments about harvesters. I post comment with pictures with people. You know, just write a nice comment there. Wow, service was awesome today. You know, I was really, I was, I was very, let your intelligence show. I was inspired. I was inspired by the profound insight you shared, especially around single than this and this. Thank you. Maybe I posted some guy's picture. Oh, the guy in green, very livid, um, sorry, very demure look. Very, you know, demure, you know, you know, very you know. Very demure, you know. Praise God. Well, I just see you just pass. See you just pass. See you just pass. See you. Who will know you are there? Praise God. So what's the second? <laughs> what's the second mentality you must have? You know, single men are what? Partners are what? Available. 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 And let me tell you something. I know we're teaching and it's very simple, but I wanted to work on yourself because it's your mindset. It's as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let me tell you, from a personal pastor's perspective, from a pastor's perspective, when they say quality men and quality women are scarce, I cannot relate. Because on my list, I can give you, as I stand here, 20 people that are single quality men, 20 people that are single quality girls. 20 like that. Like, I can, from my head, without thinking. But the question that you can find them because in your mind you say that quality people, are there, except you're looking for something else. Maybe your definition of quality is not what my definition of quality. Hallelujah. Amen. I have five more minutes. Wow. How did the time go that fast? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The third, the third mentality is this, that you need to deal with. No one wants me. No one wants me. No one wants me. And this will deal with a lot of girls. You know, a lot of ladies. No one wants me. Let me tell you something there. Eh? The way God made us, God made us in variety because without variety, they had to be boring. Some people must like tall people. Some people must like short people. Some people must like plumpy people. Some people must like lepa people. If you are not born, they, must not, they will not like you. But the reason why is that some people must like people that can talk a lot. Some people must like people that cannot talk a lot. So I'm only saying that God is so wise that no matter your speck, there's someone that will like you that way. And you need to believe it. You need to what? Believe it. Because what I see is that you're thinking that if I'm not like this person, if I'm not like that person, someone will not like me. And the Bible says that, you know, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says you are beautifully and wonderfully made. You need to believe that. And just to let you know, Physical beauty is a small part of attraction. There are other things that make you attractive. So the first thing is to begin to change the mentality. And you know though, once you think nobody loves me for the way I am, you're going to be misbehaving. You're going to be misbehaving. Misbehaving means that you start belittling who you are, you know, because you don't think so. I've seen people marry someone and say, I married her because, you know, she's very supportive. I mean, people marry for different kind of reasons. But you need to believe that the person I'm marrying, there's someone available for me. And not just someone, there are many. And I just need one person that will love me for who I am and for what I am and for the values I have and work at that. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. What can help you increase your attractiveness? What can you work on? So someone says beauty is very powerful. Beauty is one of the things that can help you, but we cannot be equally beautiful. But there are other things that can help you become very attractive. Number one, self-confidence. Self-confidence. Self-confidence is very attractive. What should you work on? So I want to increase my attractiveness, self-confidence. There's something about a guy, all the guys I spoke today, there's a guy that spoke with a lot of confidence. Did you notice the room responded differently? All the guys are like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. People don't respond. But the guy that's with who is that? Because there's something about someone that can command presence. That lady said, hmm. <laughs> Praise God. Self-confidence. So how do I make myself more attractive? Because it's not about the other person. It's you now. How do I make myself more attractive? Number one, can you increase your self-confidence? Do you know how to increase your self-confidence? Focus on what you are good at, not what you are bad at. Number two, practice a lot of self-talk to yourself. I'm bold. I'm strong. I'm courageous. I'm victorious. That's how you increase your self-confidence. Number three, have a lot of records of the things you've done well. Self-confidence helps you. So as a lady, and let me say something to you. You know, I'm, let me, let me, I'm having self-confidence. Self-confidence is a thing that most church girls and guys don't have. Because I don't know why, it seems as if our teaching in church maybe attacks self-confidence, but it's not, because have you not seen, you just go out, you see all those bodies. The way they will wear nothing and just enter the place. Like, they'll just enter like, now nah, we carry all of you come. You know, they'll just enter like that. Then, but when you see church people, it's almost as if we have no confidence in ourselves. And that's why in some way they seem so attractive. And in some way we seem as if we are not what? Attractive. And confidence speaks all the time. Praise God. I said praise God. So how do you increase your attractiveness? Number one, increase your what? Self-confidence. Number two, increase your fun element. Increase what? Your, let me give another word. Your enjoyability. Be enjoyable. There are people that, you know, let me tell you something. You know, sometimes I have free time and I'll tell my sister, and I'm like, um, let's go and have lunch. Get two people that we can have lunch with, but people that can lively, that I don't want to answer Bible question. I'm not going to pray. I want people to have lunch with. Then we begin to scout. This one, no, 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 no. That one, no, no. And we're looking in amongst people. that's single or Well, who can we have lunch with? We're looking, 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 looking. Because as soon as they come like this, the whole place is dry. <laughs> Praise God. And there are some men, the only, the only fun they know is sex. So if it doesn't, I'm telling you, just sit down with some group of men. Every time they play, it's about sex. Ah, this sex is, no, but it can't just all be about sex. And as a single person, why is your conversation so dirty and filthy? All you find amusing is, you know, sexual talks. But you can be fun. You can be fun. Ask yourself, am I fun on a scale of zero to ten? Which one? Am I fun? You know, you know how you know you're fun? By yourself, you're a party. By yourself. Like, you don't even need other person to come and make you happy. By yourself, you're a party. Some people are just, ah, they are, they are gracefully boring. They meet you the first time, you're like, you have to you, what's wrong? Is my house rent, my house rent. How can you say that? <laughs> Hope I'm not your pastor. Even if you have your problem, you don't know where to hide your problem. You don't know where to talk. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. So how do you increase your attraction? Number one, what did I say? Self-confidence. Self Build your self-confidence. When someone is talking to you, learn to look at them in the eye. Look at them. Oh yeah. Oh, thank, oh really? Nice. 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 No, no, no. And not just nice. The second thing is this. What, what's, how do you build your confidence again? I'm um, sorry. 
and what's it? Step closer to increase, to increase your attraction. What's it? What? Increase your enjoyability. Increase. And let me tell you something. How do you increase your enjoyability? Practice. Everybody has what makes them laugh. Be easy to laugh at. Be easy to laugh with. Be easy to what? Laugh. Take life easy. Have a merry heart. Don't be over serious. Everything. Ah, you are disrespecting me. You are disrespecting me. You are disrespecting me. You are disrespecting me. Everything. I'm disrespecting you. You are so serious. Have with a merry heart. The reason why is that if I can have fun with you, I would love to hang around you. If I love to hang around you, I will fall in love with you. We'll continue next week. No, Avi. The airtime has finished. Glory to God. So remember the two things we said, what we started from. Number one, I, you know, let me tell you what I did today, which you may not notice. The first thing is that I, the mindset. Why? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Why am I saying so? If the mindset is not changed, the strategy cannot work. I'm telling you, the strategy cannot work because, because it's the mind that controls everything. So the first thing that we have to deal with the mindset, the Bible says we should be renewed, Romans chapter 12 verse 2, by the transformation of our minds. So number one is the mind to be changed first. And after the mind is changed, what's the next thing right now? We now bring up the strategies to help our attractiveness. Get active online. Praise God. I said, praise God. You have a question? This lady has a question and she wanted to really ask. Okay, yeah, I'll just take your question. But you have to take care of your glasses. You have to take care of your glasses for me to take your question. Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor B, I, since I was born till today, I've never had the urge of having a family. Getting married. Okay. I don't know. You've never had the desire? Yes. To get married? Yes. Or have a family? Yes. Do you have desire for sex? <laughs> no, I just want to know. You know, I just want to know. <laughs> I never said, do you yes, have sex? Pastor. Do you have desire yes. for sex? Yes. The reason why is that... <laughs> You can't want to keep the rain and not be wet. So if you have desire for sex, there's desire for partnership somewhere. It might be small, but it's somewhere. Continue, please. So, um, and I've been lucky to always have suitors, like since when I was 15. Wow. I've always had suitors till now. But then, I don't just give Want in. it. Yes. So basically, you don't want, you don't want, you never desire to get married or desire for family. Okay. And... What's your question? You want us to... My family and no, what's your everybody question? that what's your question? me think something is wrong. Something is wrong. Okay. So everybody that loves it. But I don't think so. You don't think so. So I, I want I, to ask you now. I would, okay. I will tell you why, why. I will tell you. I will tell you if you can. We can walk together and find out if something is wrong. So tell me about your father and your mother. Did they live together? Yeah, they are together. They are together. Over 30 years now. Over 30 years. Yeah. 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 And you, you love their marriage. Yes. No. You don't, yeah. Yes, no. No, it's mixed, right? Yeah. And you don't want to be like your mom in the marriage. You need to be honest. To, to my man, yes, I would love to be like my mom. You didn't answer my question. You dodged it and answered another question. There's something you're hiding now, and you know it. Answer my question. Ask again, please. <laughs> Let me get it. You don't want to be like your mom in your parents' marriage? No. Why? Because I feel like she deserves better. You feel as if she's gone through a lot. She's yes. unappreciated. She's suffered. I just feel like maybe because she's not from my place, 
That's why all those things happen. No, I'm not, I'm not telling you why it happened. I'm saying what she feels. So you feel as if she was yes. cheated? Sir? She was not, she was, you feel as if she was cheated? She was not treated well? Yes. Could that be the reason why you're running away? No. No, you don't even know? No. The reason why is that, how did I know? The reason why is that, no reaction does not have an action. This is an open space and it's about your mom. What's your name? Amanda. Amanda, I really think 99% you have deep-seated pains around things that happen to your mom that you carry somewhere. You may not discuss it. You may not be to share it here. But it's there, there. Thank you for answering me. You already answered. You know how you know you answered? The way your eyes looked. Your eyes looked towards the left because they were memories. When your eyes look in a certain way, your eyes look towards a, a way to remember, the, to think about the future. There was another way to remember the past. And when I said that, your wife moved because you were thinking about the past. And you began to shake your head this way. You know why you were shaking your head? Because there were things you couldn't say and you don't want to say right now. And let me tell you what has happened to you over time. Let me ask you, Amanda, is there any older relative of yours that you don't like, but you don't know why you don't like the person? Does anybody have someone like that? You don't like maybe an older, but you don't know why you don't like the person. I'll tell you why you don't like the person. The subconscious mind does not record details. It records feelings. That person must have done something to you when you were very young. You don't have the details. But your subconscious mind has said, this person, run. You know what I'm saying that to you, Amanda? In your subconscious mind, there's pain around it. And because there's pain, it has resulted to who you are. The reason why I ask you to have sexual feelings is that for you to have sexual feelings, you need some kind of connection with people. You want it. But unfortunately, when there's pain and pleasure, we will run away from pain first before pleasure. So that's what is happening to you. There's something deep there that's making you run away. And we can keep digging today if you want to dig. You see? Yeah, because you know there's something there. Don't you know something there? Yes, say to the mic. Is there something there? You have the microphone with you? Yes, there's something there, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, that's fine. And I, I respect the fact that you don't want to talk about it. But, sir, I, I just feel like I, I would actually love to date. But then, that particular question, like, do you think something is wrong? Like, aside the whole family thing. Because I still believe if I should get married, I would have a better marriage. And you've already said what you, you've that, already, you, that desire. The, the, point, the desire is a function of your mind. Your mind has figured your treatment as something negative. So it's not allowing you to do it. Did you see how restless you are becoming? Yeah. And the reason why I become restless is that a lot of emotions are coming out of you. They are coming out of you. They are coming out of you. And it's they are coming out of you. They are coming. This is not the way you ask a question. When you ask a question, you start of confident, bold, and this. But you become restless. Your emotions are coming out of you, coming out of you. And you know why? You know, the, you know what's happening to you? Because as I'm talking, I'm poking the emotion points, and they're exploding in your system. So it's causing the restlessness. Your legs are vibrating. Your hands are fidgeting. You know, all of those things are happening. I have anxiety, you know. sir. What? You all of a sudden have anxiety right now? No, no, but why is it coming back right now? Because I'm in public. Because you're in public. <laughs> but when you spoke, when we started speaking, we didn't see your anxiety. What are we seeing right now? I'm just saying to you, what I would say to you is this. Let me say what I would say to you is this. That desire, not to, from what you said, came from somewhere. So you're trying to deal with the fruits. You need to go back into the roots. Get into the root and come out of it. I want to advise you to go to my messages on YouTube, talking about overcoming trauma, overcoming family trauma, listen to it over and over again. I think it will be a good place to help you start from. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Were you blessed by that today? Is there any other question like this one? Anyone? 
Any more? I'll take just one more. You know, anybody that has this kind of situation, you, something's really gone wrong and you want it to be fixed, anyone like that, don't be pointing people out. Anybody that wants to talk, just raise up their hands to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Who? Yeah, but, but she's always in front. I want someone. Yeah. There's so many people. I don't even know. I know who to choose. Okay, let me, all of you raise up your hands. If your case is not that serious, put down your hands. If your case is extremely serious, keep your hands up. Extremely serious. That I would, and I have a case, but I will let them to work on someone else apart from me. You know, extremely serious. Okay, I'll take that girl with glasses. But you have to remove your glasses before I talk to you. Yeah. No, no, not you. The kid, I'm talking about the lady behind you. Yeah. Yeah. You're on the wrong lane. It's meant to come forward. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. So my name is Betty. Okay. Um, Pastor, I would like to ask, for some time, yeah, I think I've been facing some kind of disappointment and all that. And I think it's coming from my mom. Why do you think it's coming from your mom? Okay. My mom has been married for the third time now. She's okay. in a third marriage. Okay. And my mom is a very vibrant person. She's, she's all these people that wants to see you. They already know their problems. So when she first got married to my dad, no, she didn't get married to my dad. What's her question again? So my question is, how do we really identify all those things that, sh that make guys or men shy away from us? And from the men's part, what is this particular... No, 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 no don't ask me from the men now. You're a woman. Let's know your own question. Yeah. So... So okay, I've heard you, but that's not something that is desperate. You know, I want someone that is I've heard you. I can answer that quickly, but that's not desperate. I want someone that is desperate, that needs a lot of help today. Like, if I don't get help today, I will break down. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. <sighs> my mom did not get married to my father, and I grew up with my stepmother and my father. They are both lawyers, and... Growing up, I went through hell. My father, I, there was a time I ran away from my house. Now, fast forward to being an adult, they are still behaving like children. And there was a time, like, I listened to most of your preachings and teachings about self, you know, and then I realized that everything I've been going through emotionally was because of how I was my childhood. In my relationship now, I'm working on myself and I shout at my man and it's not nice. I know the things that I literally do that I what know. What is your question? So my question is, I, am I supposed to like talk to my parents to, to, for them to realize their mistakes or I am supposed to let them be? Because they are, they are sorry for the word, but their mess up is affecting my mental health. Okay. So first of all, you can't correct, you, you cannot change somebody else. You can only focus on yourself. So I would say that if you're on a journey of healing and growth, that's where you should be on, you know, because you can't really, I mean, you can point them to it, but they have to discover that they want to be healed. But they don't want to. They are, they are adults behaving like children. In fact, this morning, I'm yes. still shouting. I'm still talking to them, like, and you, it's annoying. What's your name? Princess. You'll be very frustrated if you try to change them. I am frustrated. Yeah, and the, the reason why you're frustrated is this. The easy way to be frustrated is to try to change what you cannot change. No, I want them to realize that they That's hurt the me you and they have want, other children. See, see, you don't understand. That, that thing that you want them to realize is not within your power. People realize things by themselves when they want to realize things by themselves. So that's what is frustrating you because you are trying to force a perspective into their mind and they are refusing to accept it. Should I tell you what you should do? What you should do is this. This is the perspective they have. Work with the perspective. That's fine. This perspective, yeah, that's working. For example, you know, if someone's perspective is the fact that this is black and you didn't know it's white, that's fine. 
You think it's black? Okay, we'll work with that. As long as we're talking to you, we talk, we agree that it's black. But I know it's white. That's all. I can't change the fact that that's how you see it. You can't, you can't really force someone to see things your own way. It's their choice to see things your own way. And you, you're going to get frustrated. You're trying to think, you know, you're going to, you know, yeah, talk to me. I actually have a younger sister in Babcock. Yeah. And, like, I feel her pain. Like, I feel feel how she, what she's going through mm -hmm. and they're not realizing that as now I was damaged I'm healing now I mean still in my healing era but they are, they've damaged one person and they're not seeing the fact that they are damaging their other children that, yeah. and it is what is so really what, what do you want for the other child you want it yeah I, I wish she wouldn't go through what I Listen went to through me, yeah? you are wishing your parents will not damage their own children. I wish that also. But that's why they're their children. That's their decision. That's not your decision. If I come to your house and you don't feed your, heart, your child very well, I can say it, but it's your child. It's not my child. I'll tell you what you can do. You can walk with your sister if she wants to get healing, to get healing. But you cannot change how they will affect their child without getting frustrated because it's a decision. You know, it's like, what you're talking about is like a pastor. I can tell someone that don't divorce your wife, they will see divorce. Mm. I can't then break myself and kill myself. Because everybody must take responsibility for his own actions. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There's nothing. Yeah. I know it's painful, I know it's frustrating, but the way to ease the frustration is to change your perspective. Always tell yourself, I would only worry about what I can control about control. What can you control? I can't control how they treat her, but I can control how to help and manage the treatment. That's what I can control. Praise Actually, God. their actions, not what? how. It's their actions towards themselves. I can't change, you can't change that, but you can change how, you can influence her to give it other meanings. I can't change the fact that Nigeria and fuel price is up, but I can change the fact that people will be, Let's suffer by providing free transportation. I can come here and be talking about fair pricing tomorrow. Don't do anything. But do we have a free transport system? Let's focus on that. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Let's, have, let's pray. The lady that asked the question, what was the question again? Let's have, let's pray. We can't take many more questions, I'm sorry. Let's, have, let's pray. Yeah. What was your question again, the lady? She asked one question. Let's start off, please. Let's pray. Let's start off, Let's pray. You're a leader, so it's fine if I don't take your question. You know. I'm sorry, I couldn't take it, but we have next week. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I wanted to pray, all of you that are single, Lord, grant me the wisdom to do the right thing when it's very difficult. All of you that are married, I wanted to also pray in that area. Heavenly Father, sometimes these teachings are so simple, they're so pointed, they're so powerful. Lord, you know where people are hurting and I'm praying that your power will heal. But the second thing I'm praying that you know mentality that is causing people to be delayed. I'm praying that Holy Spirit, you please expose these mentalities and grant us grace to make adjustments. I'm praying that when people are making marital decisions, they will make the right decisions. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please, you may have your seat as we begin to close the service. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go ahead and give our Titan offerings this morning. Hallelujah. If you're giving your Titan stand on your feet, as our culture is today. If you give me your Titan stand on your feet, as our culture is today. If you give me your offering, let's do our offering and let's pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So the question is that what are you going to do to change the mentalities that you have? That you have to fix. All right. If a tight stand on your feet, let's pray. If you give me offerings, often let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the privilege to bring our tight 